Hi, good morning. I see Kelly, Liz, Joanne, and Deborah. No. Do we need any materials for this course? Uh, not at this time. Um, uh, we'll, I will be sharing resources and I'll be asking you to um, install software as we go along. About the software, I tried downloading it last night and um, it said it wasn't compatible with Max. Well, um, okay, understood. So what you need to do in that case is download the appropriate software. So um, I think I will have to share an, another link. I think I shared a link directly for the download. Give me a moment, let me find that out. Um, right here. Yeah, because I sent an executable file link. So instead of that, let me actually share my uh, screen here. And I also have the same issue. Sorry, say that again. Mute yourself, Joanne. Oh, shoot. I'm trying to, but I can't. I said I'm also experiencing the same issue. Understood. So this is the link instead that you would need to go to. So this is Windows users and here's the Mac users. So Mac users are going to install this other link. Um, so what you should do is Google uh, Think or Swim download. And it's the second link that shows up, actually the first link after this ad. The first one is the ad from TD Ameritrade. And this is the second link that shows here. If you go on that link, you'll see Windows users and then there's a Mac users. So that's where we'll uh, start. But before we uh, do anything, uh, let me get you started. So every morning at about 8.45, 9 a.m., uh, you should sign up for something like this that's called CNN Business Before the Bell. This email uh, provides you a, a quick um, overview of what is happening or what you should expect today. Uh, so for example, markets are surging, but still don't look normal. Plus high stakes meeting of finance ministers 
in Europe and countries uh, start to debate uh, how and when to exit lock lockdowns. And then US stock futures are high. Um, and then there's more detail. Markets are on the upswing, but weakness remains. On the other hand, uh, here behind the tentative stability in asset prices, econ uh, uh, economies and markets are nowhere near normal. Do we have to subscribe to this? Yes, you can. So you subscribe to it by going to, let's see. Here's the link and I should be able to share this link with you. Um, Oh, there are other people who are waiting. Hold on. Submit all. Okay, there we go. Okay, so here you subscribe. So let me see. Um, so I, I put it in the chat window. So you should have that link. Okay. Now, uh, although this newsletter is good, but you can actually go to the source of where these news are coming from. So for example, it talked about futures. So futures, is there's a direct link to futures and it is money.cnn.com slash data slash after hours. And this is talking about what happened overnight. It talks about uh, other markets, world markets. So for example, here, Nikkei 225, that's a uh, Japanese stock market in uh, Tokyo. Uh, that went up about 2% last night. And then here is Hang Seng, which is market from Hong Kong. That also went about 2%. Uh, England, uh, the London Stock Exchange went up about 3%. And DX in Germany, that went, up, uh, went about close to uh, 4%. Talks about what happened overnight to different currencies. Canadian dollar went down a little bit. Uh, uh, British pound was up. European euro, uh, euro is up. And yen is up. Uh, you can also, you know, uh, you can you can click on here and see more details. You can click here and see more uh, world markets. In commodities, light crude, which is basically um, uh, oil, uh, went up to twenty six point sixty one. Uh, this price keeps changing twenty four hours a day uh, because the crude is being traded. Uh, even if the market is closed because it's considered commodities. Uh, natural gas is up, gold is up, corn uh, is up, bond and interest rates. Okay, so this is one of the data sources. Another, uh, another source that I usually use uh, in the morning is this um, a uh, website called the stockmarketwatch.com. And I, when I go there, I uh, click under ideas and pre-market. So pre-market data is now available. The pre so market opens at 9.30 a.m. every morning, weekdays. Uh, however, the uh, there are private online stock exchanges which start to operate uh, at nine o'clock. Some others actually um, all 24 hours a day, they are open uh, and you can buy and sell privately uh, without uh, uh, a regular or traditional stock market. 
and we'll we'll talk about those as we go along. So right now, top gaining stocks are um, Exantis Capital, Sazel uh, uh, Limited. Now, what's happening with them? So right now, they have already traded 105,000 stocks, and the stock is up 49%. What happened to it? So I'm gonna copy this link, this ticker. This is called a ticker. And I'm gonna go to another website called FinViz, as in financial viz. And I'm gonna paste this here and go to see what happened to this company. Do you see the graph, the uh, regular trading price was a little over $12 uh in the last uh six months six seven, seven eight months and then it went down why did it go down what do you think happened over here anybody coronavirus yep you see that that's the march time frame oh yes so this is the march time frame you see that it started to go down, and right now it is trading at uh, $1.67 a share. And I also look at uh, I also look at short floats. Short floats are uh, people who are betting that the price is gonna go down, that it's not gonna go up. So 3.44%, almost, so outstanding shares are 48 million shares for this company. So at a price of $1.67, as we saw here, so you take that 48 million, Forty million times one point six seven. That gives you eighty one million. Gives you the market value of this company at this time. So market value of this company will continue to change as the stock market change. Uh, the stock price changes for this company. And three point four percent of the people are betting against it. But what actually happened? This is the section that I'm really interested in. Um, I actually do not see any new news that would tell me that the price should go up or go down based on just the pricing uh, standpoint. So there is something more that is going on that we do not know with this company that somehow other people know. I am, um, okay, there are a few other people to admit, okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna log into Robinhood uh, to my personal account and show you here XAN. So first of all, we need to know what is this company. Um, is a real estate investment trust which engages in origination, holding, and management of commercial mortgage loans and commercial real estate related debt investments. The company was founded in 2005 and headquartered in New York. Okay. Market cap of this company is 33.98 million. Okay. However, we just saw what was the valuation that 48. Uh, 48, 68 million times 1.67. The market value was 81 million, but only 33.98 million of it uh, is, uh, is the actual assets that they have, actual value that they have. Actually, the price has gone up to 2.35. So what happened? Let's look at a one week graph. Last week on Friday at 3.40 p.m. it closed at $1.05. 
and right now it is at 240. So imagine if you had purchased a thousand shares at about one thousand and five dollars on Friday, it would have already turned into two thousand four hundred dollars at this time. Should you get out or should you wait um, for the stock to further rise? That would be an important. So first of all, it is important to see what was the bottom uh, price for this stock. You know, identifying that price point and then the price point where you should get out, that is an important question that we'll try to answer um, in, this, uh, in this course. If you look at a three month graph, of course, you see right here, right around the March timeframe, uh, February 26. That's when the price started to go down. So normally this stock trades at about $12. So what do you think? Is it a good buy at this price point? Go ahead. Yes, I think so. It looks like it, right? So let's look at a one year graph. Still looks pretty good because see 11, $12 and there was no drop before throughout the year. So we got a five year graph. So lowest it went was about $8. And that was March 10th, 2017. Otherwise this stock had held its uh, value throughout the year, uh, throughout five years. So dollar five would have been a great buy, but even at 236, it's, it looks like a pretty good deal especially for a long-term portfolio. So if you, had a, uh, if you had an IRA, for example, if your parents had an IRA, um, where, which is called an individual retirement account, and if you purchase at this time and then let it ride through the, uh, through the fluctuations, this might be a good buy for a long-term position. Uh, but let's, let's look at a few other things. Um, um, the surprising thing is that there is no news, no particular news about this company that would send this stock uh, going sky high. There's no negative news. There's no positive news. Last time there was a news was March 25th and where it provided an update on the status of financing arrangement as of March 25th. And after that news, the price of this stock went down by 31%. On March 11th, there was a news about quarterly cash dividends for common stock and preferred stock. And the value went down. There was another news that same day. They just spent 108,000 on shares. Aha. Now, this is a director of this company who bought $108,000 worth of shares for this company. What does that tell you? So this is an insider. Of course, this person knows Jeffrey Cohn is the director at this company know something about about the status of uh, this company going forward and decided to spend $108,000. So when insiders purchase stock, that tells us that there is something that they have good hopes. When they start to dump, then we know there's something going on with this company. There may be a pending lawsuit that these directors know about uh, but we don't know about. So that tells you that there may be a good reason uh, uh, for why this stock is going up. There is another source uh, called Open Insider. OpenInsider.com. And if you search for this company, XAN, that would give you, look at this, March 16th, Stern Matthew, president of the company, purchased uh, 3,000 
of these uh, shares at 12.99 that's a steep price for a stock that went down, down to dollar 5 Elliot Thomas um, Uh, vice executive vice president at a thirteen dollar and sixty cents purchase, uh, twelve thousand shares for about one hundred twenty nine thousand dollars. So, um, even though this data is not too old, this is three sixteen, this three thirteen, March thirteen. So March thirteen, a lot of people purchased a lot of stock from within this company. And this is, this is all public data. They have to declare this. If they don't declare this, that would be an illegal insider trading. So there's a legal insider trading and an illegal uh, insider trading. So this would be legal uh, insider trading where they're declaring Price. if they're buying or selling anything. Um, so this, uh, this would be, um, uh, this uh, uh, the stock market watch is usually in the morning my first go-to place. You guys, I'm back. You guys okay? Okay, great. Okay. Um, let me share the screen again. Because in the morning, the stock market watch is usually my first go-to place. And I look at pre-market. So the pre-market data will start, start to become available from 9 a.m. Uh, between 9 a.m. and 9.30. And you can see already that XAN, that was at the top, has gone down. And now SSL um, is, uh, is on the top. I also look at the volume. Uh, if... A company is selling, for example, right here, uh, properties holding 4,130 stocks. That does not give me any confidence. You know, only 4,000 stocks are traded. However, for a company like this, which already has traded 2 million stocks, 2.14 million stocks before the market opening, that tells me that this, that there is a huge volume. Now, this is a, uh, a therapeutic company, so it has to do something with medicine. Let's look at um, uh, the financial viz uh, part of it to see if there is any news that is triggering this uptick. And of course, there is one, April 7th, preliminary data from its COVID-19 uh, uh, compassionate use program, treating seven patients with acute respiratory failures. So of course, it sent, uh, it sent the uh, stock soaring up because it talks about uh, COVID-19 and it talks about positively that the company is doing something uh, good with it. Uh, let's look at uh, the live data. Uh, within Robinhood, 4.44 right now. So look at this. Just yesterday it was trading at 318 and now it is at 444. What does this company do? Uh, engages in cell therapy development. It develops placenta-based cell therapy product candidates for the treatment of multiple, um, I don't know what that word is, inflammatory and hematologic conditions, it focuses on the development clinical trials and manufacture of cell therapies and related technologies. Uh, its products include clinical pipeline, PXL, PLX Immune, <coughs> PLX Pad, and R18. The company was founded by uh, Doran Schur on May 11, 2001, and is headquartered in Haifa, Israel. 165 employees, market cap of 58 million, uh, average volume on a daily basis is around a million shares being traded. However, today it has already traded 2.14 million and the market is not even open yet. Um, now, 
some of these, so we're gonna, we're gonna see what happens to these uh, after the market opens. So what do you think is gonna happen to this company? That is the question that we are trying to answer. And if you can find an answer to that question, uh, that would that would be a you know a groundbreaking uh, thing for a new uh, investor to to make that kind of determination. So I usually look at the floats. So the short floats are people who are who have already sold this share at a higher price and they are expecting they are. <laughs> They are looking forward to purchasing when the price goes down. So they're basically betting against the company. They are thinking that this company is going to go down in value and the share price is going to go down so they can purchase it at a cheaper price. And I'll talk to you about it. You know, so how do you sell a share which you do not even own in hopes that you can purchase it later on at a, at a uh, cheaper price? That's called shorting the stock. Um, here, if you look at it, market cap, 160 employees. And 18 million shares are outstanding. So th those are in the market. Okay. Let me show you a little bit about this trading uh, platform called um, uh, called Think or Swim. Uh, this is something that you have to install right away um, as soon as we are done with this session. Uh, so when you install it, this is going to be the default uh, uh, default screen. It has different panels. It shows you here buying power two hundred thousand, and of course, this is simulated trading. So trading, if you, uh, if you purchase, uh, excuse me, if you open an account, uh, a paper money account, as you can see here, paper money, they give you $200,000 to invest uh, right off the bat. So when you make an investment, it is like spending that money in the market. The data is, data is going to change based on the market uh, fluctuations. Uh, so for example, uh, this company PSTI, Okay, so this is not even available on this platform. So not all companies are available on, on all platforms. Uh, there's uh, this TV link. So sometimes people like to, to continue to hear news as they come along. So that option is there. This is a watch list. You can add symbols to this and, and see how the price uh, is changing in, in real time. Uh, there are these quick charts. Uh, so for example, PSTI, that chart came in. Uh, of course, um, you, know, you can, Annie. this you can go back 15 years. Uh, Robinhood, you can go back five years. Now this, depending on how you're using it, this can become a very intimidating uh, a piece of software to look at it looks like a very professional software that stock traders would use uh, and they would have screens, uh, multiple screens filled out with, with different graphs, monitoring different things. And we'll get to that point uh, very quickly, probably in the next day or so. You hear the bell? That bell indicates that the market is open now. That's 9.30. And let's look at the real-time data, PSTI. Okay. So the price is still stable, this particular company. 
Let's go back. What are other companies that are doing well in pre-market? And what happens to the real-time data? So you see, as soon as the market opened, price went down uh, to 335, but this is not a huge change at this time. Let's look at some of the big names. Uh, let's look at Boeing. What do you think would be happening to Boeing at this time? Make a guess, anybody. Stock would be going down. You see? Stock would be going down. That's what, why would you expect that? Uh, as, right now, no one is really flying. And... Right. Um, Boeing is in a double bind because it also had its planes crashed last year, right? Yes. So, so those are also issues that have been plaguing Boeing. But let's see what actually happened. So Boeing prices, Boeing is trading at $160 a share right now. Uh, if you look at a one year stock, uh, it was pretty stable at about $340, $350 price range. Right? Look at five years. So five years ago, its normal price was $127. Um, then in late 2007, uh, it's in 2016, and then 2017, it constantly kept going on up, reached its peak at about $440 a share. And then just before the crash, it was still trading at $340. Uh, dollars. So let's look at this price point, March 1st, 2019. That is the time frame uh, when, when the planes, uh, the second plane went down uh, in, in Africa, right? So right after that took a huge nosedive, went down to 362, but still picked up, went down, picked up, and then, this is February 21st, $330, and in about, uh, in about a month, no, less than a month, by March 21st, it went down to $95. Imagine if somebody had purchased it at this price point. All their savings would be wiped out. But if somebody had purchased it at this price point, just um, within the last month, you know, at about this, um, at about this price for $92, that was the cheapest it went. Now this is also, there's also another concept um, of support and resistance. Support and resistance would be a price point between uh, minimum and maximum price for this stock. So for example, if you look at this, the resistance would be this line. If you, if you drew a straight line across uh, at this point, that would be the 347 is the resistance within the last three months for this stock. When it tries to go up 300 and, uh, $330, people start to sell the stock in large numbers, which brings the price down. So that is called resistance. Resistance is the upper limit that the, uh, that the stock would trade at. And um, support would be the lowest price point. So for example, when the stock reached about 316, people started to see that it is a great buy. So they would start to buy. That would bring the price up. Simple economics, um, you know, you, um, if the price goes down, the demand goes up, if the price is too high, people start to sell. Uh, the demand is low, supply is high. So support and resistance. So this is within the last three months, but if you look at last one month, what do you think is the resistance here? Resistance would be a line somewhere in here, an 
average line in the uh, about the middle so about 160 dollars is is the resistance when it starts to go up 160 people start to sell so the price starts to come down but what is the support level support level was about 90 uh, in the 90s so 92 dollars 99 dollars that was a support so if it went down to that price point people would start to buy supply will reduce demand will increase that would start to send the price up high so this is a day this is a time this went 183 uh, dollars a share this is the day when uh, trump had announced that he is going to take care of the uh, airline industry that there was 50 billion dollars to support the airline industry uh, that day uh, so it went up but then that was the resistance it started to come down came down to 123 now this has become its new support so whenever it reaches about 125 126 people start to purchase and it starts to go up right now it's trading at 159 so if you look at one day um, trade so that's where we are so this would be another um, app that i would like you to sign up for uh, if you're over 18 you should be able to sign it up uh, sign up sign, sign up for this uh, yourself um, and this is where you actually purchase uh, shares so there are uh, several different ways primarily two major ways of how you buy a stock so for example if i wanted to buy this share i can put whatever number of shares uh, so let's say I'm going to buy 10 shares of this at a market price. A market price would be that when I sent this order, uh, even though I may be seeing 157, but the, you see the price is constantly changing. If there is a difference of a few seconds between placing the order, there's some noise. Okay, I think we found the culprit. Okay, so um, if I want to say that I, we want to buy 10 shares at a market price between the time difference between I push this button and the actual purchase, if the price goes up or down, that would be reflected uh, in the actual price. However, I can also set a filter uh, that's called a limit order. A limit order is that I want to buy this at, let's say, $149 a share, and I want to buy 10 shares, and it's good for 10 days. So if uh, uh, one day, so if at any point today, the share price touches 149, go ahead and purchase 10 of these shares. So I'm telling the software, this is called a limit order. Similarly, you can, um, uh, you can uh, also sell uh, this as, uh, as a limit order. Uh, let's see. So this was buy and then, oh, where's the cancel button? I don't see it. Let's go back and okay, let's look at uh, let's look at another stock XOM that's Exxon Mobil. Okay, so 
So that was for buying and this is for selling. So if you click here, <laughs> sell uh, whatever number of shares, uh, let's say 10 shares at market price, or we can also make it a limit order uh, that when the price hits, so right now it's, it's uh, uh, trading at 54 cents. Um, and we wanted to sell it at 60 cents. So when the price goes to 60 cents, 10, sell uh, 10 shares, 20 shares, or 1,000 shares of this only for today. You can also change it good until canceled or filled, right? So, so if I select this option, I'll keep waiting uh, to sell this order until the time comes in. You just say review order and, and you can sell it. So right now I do not have enough shares to sell as as this number so i'd go back and review this order and i can hit sell so it will automatically sell it at 60 cents when the when that price uh, uh is available uh, so buying and actual buying and selling is not a big deal uh, all you need to know is the ticker of the company and you can go ahead and uh and sell that uh, or purchase it. The challenge is finding out at what point you should buy, you should get in, and at what point you should get out. So now there's a basic question. What is a, what is a stock or what is a share? A share is, is a portion of the company that you purchase and you become a part owner of that company. Uh, so if there is a, if you ever wanted to be an owner of Apple, um, Apple is trading at about 267 today. Uh, you could purchase one share of, uh, at $267 today and you will become one of the shareholders now. What is the value of this company? This company is valued $1.17 trillion. So how much is your $267 out of that uh, 1.17 trillion? A very minuscule part. Uh, but uh, if you, if you uh, held it for a long term and this price went up to $1,200, uh, of course, the total market cap would uh, market value would increase, uh, and your share would also increase in that company. Similarly, uh, let's look at um, Amazon. Amazon is trading at two thousand dollars, two thousand twenty-four dollars today. So, if you had purchased one uh, one thousand dollars worth of shares for Amazon back in uh, 1998, that $1,000 would be equal to $1.5 million today. If you didn't sell it, if you didn't buy more, just, you know, you just spent, put $1,000 in Amazon, today it would be worth $1.5 million, even after all the market fluctuations and, you know, 2008 financial crisis. And even today's, you know, this month's uh, final, last month's uh, financial crisis, it would still be about $1.5 million. So the question is, when do you purchase and when do you sell? That's what we'll be looking at. That's what all traders do. Uh, so when we, uh, so, so normally a company would sell its stock to raise capital. So for example, if Amazon said that they wanted to open a new um, headquarter and they needed $500 million to open that and they need that 500 million. How many shares would they have to sell? Would they have to create to make uh, $500 million? Uh, so let's look at this 500 million divided by 2024 today's price. So they'll, they'll only have to come up with 250,000 more stocks approximately and they'll have enough money to, to, uh, to uh, provide capital for the project that they want to work on. Uh, government policies make a huge difference. Government, 
uh, announcements uh, make a huge difference as you might have already noticed uh, in the case of Boeing. Uh, if we look at um, Amazon, let's see what happened during the last one month, <coughs> price dipped to 1676 on March 12th. And now it is back up to 2027, uh, which is the highest price within the last one month. Within the last three months, higher price point was $2,180. You look at year long. This, so if you look at the year long, uh, you can see that there is a huge spread between highs and lows. So on June 3rd, 2019, when there was nothing specific going on, the price dipped to 1692 and then just before the uh, coronavirus, February 19th, it, it went up to 2070. Look at the five-year graph. It is constantly on the, uh, on the increase. So even the virus issue did not make that much of a bump uh, or a dent um, in the overall pricing, if you look at a long-term horizon. So back in uh, 2016, you could have purchased it for 500, for about $500, right? So, uh, so these are stocks that you want to buy for your retirement accounts. Okay. Now, another important data point, what is happening with the market right now? So, uh, so this is the futures uh, link, uh, cnn.com slash money slash after hours. And I'll share this link uh, in an email after this call. So if you, excuse me, if you click on markets, this is the live data, the Dow, is 3.1% up, that's 706 points. NASDAQ is up 231. S&P is up 2.7. Now, what, are, what is Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P? These are indexes. Indexes would mean that these have a bunch of companies within them, and they average out the pricing of those companies that are included, that are listed, on that stock market. There are a lot of stock markets. Uh, some famous ones you might have heard, uh, New York Stock Exchange, right? So to trade on New York Stock Exchange, you need to be either in the stock market, inside the market, physical market, or you need to use a platform that would give you access to the stocks that are listed on New York Stock Exchange. So Think and Swim would provide you that access into New York Stock Exchange. Robinhood would provide you that. Um, uh, but these are good indicators of what is happening overall to the market. You go down, look at commodities. Uh, oil is doing 26, 29 right now. Um, and this is what happened. Uh, at the close in other countries. Now you see the data from London and Germany is still live. Uh, if you look at it, the values are changing because the markets are not closed in London and Germany yet. They're still trading. Okay. So we'll so um, as we go along, you'll start you'll start to see that these numbers start to make sense uh, when you look at them in the context of actual impact on the money. Uh, so tomorrow, what we are going to do is we are going to actually make a purchase uh, of some stocks um, and see what happens in the first thirty-five minutes to those stocks. We'll use uh, the simulated. 
uh, money as well. We'll buy larger, larger number of stocks uh, with the paper money. Um, uh, that two hundred thousand dollars that we have available, we'll also customize this uh, um, uh, this view that you see. This is the default view when you install it. This is what you're going to see. But then you start to customize it depending on what you want to see, uh, what kind of widgets you want to see on different parts of this uh, uh, of this view. So today's homework: make sure that you have uh, Thinkorswim installed, Thinkorswim. and you have created a paper money account. Uh, and once it is installed, and once you are logged in you see this $200,000 right here, uh, that option. So to create this account, you'll, uh, you'll go to, <clears throat> uh, you'll go to this link, Paper Money Think or Swim platform, and register. It's going to ask you a few questions. Uh, let me help you with the answers to some of these questions that it will ask you. So do you have an existing TD Ameritrade account? You say no, you do not, unless you have it. Um, and then, uh, then you choose your user ID, your password, email address that would be the normal and and what products are you interested in trading you can check all of these um, equities options futures forex and exchange traded funds so forex would be foreign exchange so that would be dealing in currency uh, uh, valuations as currencies fluctuate uh, you know, there is uh, a way to make money on those uh, futures options and equities would be the actual stocks or shares. And do you have an existing brokerage account? You say no, and you create this account. Okay. So those are the options that you're going to use. Uh, garlic and Italian seasoning, right? Okay. Okay. Oh, Some kids are getting. <laughs> okay. So the most interesting part that's going to, so, so you, you need to download that software. You need to create this account. And when you um, are ready, when you when this software is installed, um, and you double click the icon, it's going to ask you for that username and password. Uh, that will let you in, um, and that's where we will start. At the same time, if you can, um, uh, if if you are eighteen years of age yourself, you go to Robin.com. He's coming back at eleven, like. Teams or parents are given something. That's why she wanted us to get along. Somebody, somebody mm -hmm. background noises are heard a lot. Just double. Oh. Okay. So you go to Robinhood.com and sign up. This is also relatively easy. But um, if you are, if like, if you are 18, uh, uh, you're good to go. You can create this account. If you're not 18 years old, you're gonna need your one of your parents or guardian uh, to help you create this account. Uh, you do not need to fund it at this time, but make sure your account is created uh, because uh, they are because it's dealing with money. Uh, they have a lot of uh, restrictions in place. They have to abide by a lot of rules. Uh, to to avoid um, uh, you know money laundering and those types of issues that go on with financial markets. So sometimes, uh, if you do not have an established uh, credit history, this may take a while. They may ask you to to um, uh, to provide them with some of the identifications uh, before they let you in uh, onto that platform. But I have found this uh, Robinhood to be one of the easiest uh, applications uh, to, uh, to deal with um, in terms of buying and selling uh, stocks. Uh, but this would, this would not be your retirement account if you, are, uh, if you have an retirement account. This is not retirement, this is an actual um, investor account. Um, so, so you have to be 
you have to be mindful of that. So once you have that account, you can log in, you can add money, uh, you can add uh, bank information. Uh, right here, banking, you can, you know, you can link your accounts and you can add money to this account. And we'll talk about that at a later point. But right now, just two things, download, um, uh, download Thinkorswim, uh, create the paper money account, and uh, create Robinhood account. Uh, if you have any issues, uh, feel free to email me. Um, I'll, I'll try to help you uh, with getting started with those two um, softwares. I have a question about the yes. support and resistance. Yes. How often should you reevaluate? So once you see the support and the, and the resist, hold, um, how long should you let the trend go before you reevaluate to find a new uh, number? Yeah, so we, we will talk about those strategies. Um, you know, so, so there are different support levels. So you, for example, if you're looking at a one month chart versus a, uh, versus a five year chart, there will be a lot of different, um, so let's look at Boeing. So today, if you were looking at it, what is the resistance? The resistance is at 162.37. Today's support is 157. So it is fluctuating between these values today. If you looked at a one week chart, you'll see that this, this bottom is the, uh, uh, is the support and resistance. So during this time frame, resistance was about what? Uh, 142, uh, but once it crosses, once it smashes that resistance, now the next limit becomes a resistance. So this is a very fuzzy concept, um, uh, if you ask me, uh, to comprehend. But what it tells you is that if it crossed a resistance, the next price point could be, uh, what would be the next price point? So for example, uh, looking at the five-year chart, uh, its lowest price was $108. I, we're not able to see more than five years in this particular software. But in Think and Swim, and I'll show you tomorrow, um, that the, the, the support level uh, below 92 was, uh, was $80. So if it had gone down below 92, it would have continued to to drop until $80 uh, of share. But it, you know, it hit the bottom at 92 uh, last month, and then it started to go up. So, uh, so again, this is one of, uh, one of those things. You know, once a price has changed, you can do all the analysis on it. What happened? Uh, the most important thing is, predicting what will happen in the future. That is what we are trying to, uh, to understand. So, and that is not easy. Uh, people who have spent, you know, their lifetime doing this, they make mistakes. Otherwise, you know, why would, um, you know, why would we have these problems with the stock market that, that we see on a regular basis? Uh, you know, all these experienced people who are running the, the, the feds, uh, the, the Federal Reserve Bank, um, you know, uh, that basically dictates what happens in the market. You know, how do they make mistakes? A lot of this has to do with policies. So I'll, I'll give you an example of the role that policies, government policies play um, from, from an old time. Back in uh, 1700s, uh, just around the, uh, the time, um, you know, uh, the, the Declaration of Independence was um, declared in the U.S. At that time, England was sending its prisoners to Australia. So Australia started out as a as a jail for bad people. Uh, so what would they do is they would load them up in a ship, and they will pay money to the uh, to the ship captain based on the number of people that were loaded onto the ship. A few months later, when the ship would arrive in Australia, 
two third of the people would have died. Only one third of the prisoners actually made it to uh, Australia. And, and that caused a lot of uh, public uproar. Uh, clergy, they, um, uh, you know, they tried to, to appeal to the good sense of these uh, um, um, the captains that provide them good, uh, uh, good facilities so they, they stay alive and they stay healthy during the voyage. Uh, but nothing made sense, nothing made, nothing worked. People still kept dying until the British Parliament, they passed a law that they are not going to pay based on the number of people who are getting on the ship. Rather, they're going to pay based on the people who are getting off the ship in Australia. Overnight, the mortality rate went down to 1%. 99% of the people started to reach Australia alive because, because of how the government has um, had set up the incentive process. So, uh, so you see a lot of these fluctuations, these support levels, these uh, uh, resistance levels, uh, but a lot of these have to do with how the, what kind of incentives a company is working under. And, and of course, you know, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a constant balancing act uh, that people, uh, that, that uh, different stakeholders in the market, they have to abide by. So we'll see how, um, how the values fluctuate and what can we do to learn and predict what's gonna happen in the market uh, so we are prepared. Uh, there's still no guarantees. We, we would still make mistakes and, and losing uh, in some stocks and, and making money in other stocks is part of the, uh, part of the challenge. Uh, our hope is that we'll, you know, you might have heard of the word called diversification. Diversification is that you don't put all your money in one stock. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. You spread them out because some companies are going to lose money. Some are going to make money. So you want to choose more companies in your portfolio that are going to make money versus those that are going to lose. But, but you have to expect that some will make money, some will lose. Um, and that's part of the game. Okay, if you have any quick questions, um, I'm here. Uh, I'll, I'll stay on those uh, who do not have any, any questions and want to drop out, they can drop off. Uh, and we'll get we'll we'll get started tomorrow morning once again, and we will try to um, to watch the market and think and swim as uh, the market changes. Uh, one thing that you should know about uh, uh, about this um, uh, paper money account that the data is 20 minutes delayed, uh, so we do not get to see real time data, uh, but that is actually a good thing when you are practicing because you already know 20 minutes in advance what has happened in the market. So that should give you ample opportunity to purchase and sell and make profit um, in this uh, simulated trading uh, platform at this time. So, so we'll see who is able to make more money. Uh, so that would be part of the assignment as we go forward. Most important time is between 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. Uh, for stock market, and the other important session that happens is just before the market close. So market closes at 4:30. Uh, so between, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, the, uh, market closes at 4 o'clock. So so 3:30 to 4 o'clock would be another important time uh, when you should be, um, you know, looking at uh, the market, how it has behaved during the day and what should you do before the market closes? I have one, uh, yes. another question. Can you, um, uh, can you walk through um, some signs that we should look at to, for stocks to get our attention? I know we talked about stuff in the news, but like what should we look at to see? And then the next question is, um, you walk through the research process. So if you could say, okay, this is the stock we want now to research, you want to go A site, B site, C site, so that you can build your decision-making process. If you can walk us through that step. 
Um, yes. So, uh, so as, um, as a trader, you will have to develop your own process. I will show you my process, but my process is not the only process. And my process is not uh, the most successful process. So different people would have different. So what I do, and I'll walk you through this. I usually in the morning, I go to this website called the stock market watch. And you ask me which stocks to look at. So these are the stocks that I usually look at the top gaining stocks and top losing stocks. And I try to analyze why, what happened that got them on this list. But there are plenty of these lists. So for example, this was pre-market. If you are looking at uh, in the evening after four o'clock, you would also want to look at after hours. It'll tell you uh, the top uh, gaining stocks and top losing stocks after four o'clock. So between four and six, six o'clock, you can still trade on uh, Robinhood. You have even a larger time frame to trade on Think, think and Swim. Um, uh, so, so that would be, you know, one place. Similarly, if you go to homepage, there are, Here. Give me there my are larger lists. Uh, uh, oh my markets. So Dow Jones today. So on Dow Jones, uh, it'll talk about the, uh, the, the most active stocks, uh, most uh, active in terms, of in terms of dollar volume, in terms of just the volume, the number of stocks, but number of stocks might be misleading because some stocks, you know, they may be what's called penny stocks, you know, stocks that are less than a dollar. So volume would be high, but the, but the dollar volume, the value may not be that high. So this talks about dollar volume. So it talks about different companies. Of course, when you talk about dollar volume, Apple would come up to the top. Amazon would come up, Microsoft, Tesla. You know, these are, these are big companies. Their stock values are huge and volume is huge. So for example, Apple trading at 268, it's, normal daily volume is in, uh, you know, uh, in high single digit millions. Amazon, on the other hand, barely makes it to a million because the stock price is very high. Uh, uh, Microsoft Corporation, $168 a stock, uh, trades about 8 million, uh, you know, so, so this is another list. Uh, then dollar gainers, um, or decliners, uh, NASDAQ. So, so, so there, there are plenty of these lists. Similarly, in Think and Swim, there's an option called Scan. So, so you can continue to scan a market based on your criteria. And we'll talk about this, this criteria, how you can set them um, a little later in this course. Uh, they will continue to give you these tickers or these companies that you should be looking out for. Uh, what you also need to be careful about is that uh, all companies that just get that get listed on uh, on a stock market, uh, you know, they're not always. So there are. Let me say it in this way: that there are crooks uh, in the market. So some companies uh, they exist uh, and they make their money in dubious manners. Uh, one classic example is Enron. Back in early 2000s, there was this huge company that was that was the buzz. Everybody wanted to get in, um, and turned out the whole company was a fraud. Their uh, their books were cooked, and nothing was real, and people lost a lot of their um, uh, their, their uh, retirement money in in that company's stock. Uh, just uh, uh, just last few weeks, there is this company called. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, are you still there? Can you turn on? What was that company? The coffee company. Every day, New York, 
You'll have to unmute yourself. Uh, okay, so there was this coffee company, it was a Chinese coffee company. Can't remember the name of their company right now. Uh, um, their price, they were trading at about $48, $50 a share. And um, uh, uh, last week, they went down to $22 and then it, then it reached $15 and $10 and $4. Turned out that they were cooking their books. And um, once the word gets out, uh, yeah. you know, there's, there's hardly any recovery uh, for those companies. So the people who were invested heavily in those companies, they lose a lot of money. So you have to be, you have to be mindful uh, when you, when you pick these companies that, especially for a, for a, a new investor, uh, making sure that these are reputable companies um, that you, that you know them um uh, you know even before you started trading uh, you know companies like apple amazon walmart uh, you know these are companies that have actual uh, value that they deliver to people um, so so that would be another uh, way to look at it okay so like I said, if you need to drop off, you can drop off. But if you have any questions, I'm still here. And the next class is on Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Oh, well, we have a class tomorrow. Oh, my bad. Yes. Sorry. Yeah, we do have a class tomorrow. Um, and then after tomorrow's class, we meet next week on Tuesday. So tomorrow I'm going to give you a few more assignments. Uh, and that would be actual trading on think or swim, uh, you know, in that simulated with the simulated money. Um, so, so you'll have Thursday, Friday, and Monday to make your trades and show me if you were able to make any money um, using that paper money. Um, so, so we'll 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 talk about that assignment tomorrow. Hi. Hello. Any other question? Yeah, I do. Okay, go ahead. Um, for the paper money like website. Yeah. There's a question saying, "What products are you interested in trading? Which ones do we? Which box do we click? All of them. Okay, thank you. Yeah, equities, forex, um, you know, all, all five six options that it gives you. You you want to sign up for all of them. Um, you, you said that if a company, when you had did the, um, the analogy and you said that they had to really, they needed $5 million, $500 million to do blank. So they released more stocks. Does companies have a, a um, cap in the amount of stocks that they can release or can they release as many stocks as they want? No. Then my second question is, do you do, do you think that, um, it's best to do the stuff on your phone or do you require, do you think it's best to do it on like a laptop? Like when we're, when we're doing our homeworks and stuff, like do you trade? both ways okay so um so yes every company has a cap before they can increase uh, their number of shares they have to go through a lot of uh, red tape with the ssc um the securities and stock commission um so so they can't just offer uh, new stocks uh, at their will they have to uh, they have to go, go through a regulatory process. Uh, so how many, how, you know, what value, what, what is the maximum number of shares that they can um, issue? Is depend, it depends on market cap. So for example, for Boeing, uh, the market cap is $90.72 billion. Um, you want to look at another company, let's say Ford. Ford sticker is F. So you go to Ford and you read this, this is $19 billion uh, market cap. And anything beyond that they didn't need to do, they have to go through a regulatory process uh, you know, before they can issue more stocks. And we'll talk about different types of stocks. You know, there are common stocks, there are preferred stocks. Uh, there's another concept called IPO, initial public offering. Uh, you know, all those concepts, we'll talk about uh, them uh, tomorrow. Um, so there's another interesting comparison. So Ford Motor Company, you know that this is a company that 
manufactures and distributes the sales of automobiles. But look at another company uh, that deals with cars, but does not really have any infrastructure to build cars or, or, or own cars even. And that's called Uber, right? So a company that, that uh, manufacture cars is valued at market cap of 19 billion. Look at Uber. $39 billion, almost twice as much, right? They don't even own cars, let alone make cars. Let me see. Say that again. What do you say? He put too much? Oh, he's not. He's... Oh, okay. That was the background noise. Okay. So, um, so, so these are different things, but, you know, um, as you know, Uber is now fact of life. Um, uh, the chance that this company is going to go bankrupt um, do not seem to be very high because they do have a huge network of people. They have a model where they are actually making money. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, this is as legit as it can get, you know, in terms of companies. Uh, but you'll see different uh, as aspects of a lot of these aspects are very interesting. Uh, but the, uh, the thing is, uh, if you are a student, um, you know, this may open up an avenue for you for a future, uh, for a potential future uh, career in the financial industry, if that's what you wanted uh, to pursue. Uh, and if you just wanted to uh, have enough knowledge so you can buy and sell stocks in your uh, in your retirement portfolio. Uh, you know this course is going to give you that uh, knowledge. Um, with some of the retirement accounts, you are not allowed to purchase uh, specific company stocks, and the reason is that you know those are too risky. So you are only allowed to to purchase in what's called um, a mutual fund. A fund is uh, another concept. Let, let's talk about the funds tomorrow. Uh, because, uh, uh, because that would involve use of uh, uh, materials that, that I will need to pull uh, from a different source. So right now, just remember, uh, starting with the stock market watch, once you select a company, let's say you want to see what is this company called TOPS, you know, the ticker. The next stop for you is going to be Finviz. Um, at Finviz, you look at, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Um, of course, there's a lot of data that you can look at, but I uh, like to look at, you know, uh, how many people are betting against it. You know, that number should be smaller if this is, like 4%, 5% or higher, um, then I usually shy away from that. And then I look at the news of what's happening with that market. And of course, you have to go and read these news, just not just uh, the, the headline, because headlines sometimes uh, may be misleading. Um, okay, so if you look at Fenviz, I would also look at Open Insider to see uh, how that particular company's executives are purchasing or selling stocks. So, for example, let's look at Boeing. What happened to Boeing as it hit the crisis last year? So, you see here, uh, 2019, February 12, 2019, executive vice president sold. 8,500 of stocks at $410, valued at about $3.4 million worth. So you know when the executives are selling something, is something bad is coming, right? So if you were looking at this, you would have known last February uh, to get out of this company. And you can see that right now, uh, Boeing is trading at uh, you know, 160 some dollars, 158. So, so that executive made a very good decision for himself. 
um, you know, the good thing is that that was public data. So other people could also uh, make their decisions based upon that piece of information. Okay. Um, wow, we still have 23 people. What is it? You, you don't want to drop out? Okay, guys. So good talking to you. Uh, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Guys, real, real quick, I'm getting a few people that are asking.